So, welcome in this podcast. I'm Dr. Claudio Conforti from the Dermatology Clinic of Trieste. And in this podcast, I'm going to discuss with you some routes that we have to follow during our daily activity to correctly diagnose skin cancer. First of all, when we are dealing with the recognition of skin cancer, we need to analyze three main features. Colors allow estimations about the type and location of chromophores at different levels of the skin. Patterns allow to assign a skin lesion to a specific diagnosis. And architecture that allow to differentiate between likely benign and potentially malignant skin tumors. Colors depend on the presence of melanin in different levels of the skin. For example, as you can see, black corresponds to the presence of melanin in the stratum corneum, while brown corresponds to the presence of melanin along the epidermal dermal junction. Gray corresponds to the presence of melanin in the upper part of the dermis, while blue corresponds to the presence of melanin in the deeper part of the dermis. So obviously color is an important feature to analyze and in fact there are different rules based on colors that we will discuss later. But among the most common rules that we can use every day, I would like to remind you the ABCDE rule that is extremely easy to teach also to patients because it consists of five criteria, asymmetry, irregular borders, more than two colors, diameter bigger than 6 mm, and history of evolution. Another rule is the so-called only son of a white wood mother that consists in the fact that a solitary lesion after the first decade of our life should be carefully evaluated and eventually also excised throughout melanoma, even in the absence of melanoma-specific criteria on dermoscopy. Another rule is the little red riding hood sign that suggests that individuals with fair skin and light colored hair might have difficult to see a melanotic melanoma. For example, here you can see this patient affected by neurofibromatosis type 1 with a lot of skin tags and then with this pinkish nodule located on the back. This is a close picture. And as you can see from this uh, dermatoscopic picture, we have more than two criteria for a melanotic melanoma, for example, polymorphic vessels, uh, negative network, and melanin. Last but not least, the ugly duckling sign. The ugly duckling sign is based on the comparative approach among more nevi of the same patient. So if we see a lesion too different from the others, we should remove it to rule out melanoma. Now I will show you four rules that we have to follow during our daily activity for the diagnosis of skin cancer. First of all, we have to apply dermoscopy on all lesions without a clinical preselection with two aims. The first is to confirm the naked eye diagnosis and the second is to re-evaluate the diagnosis. For example, here you can see a, a patient, a 55-year-old woman with a lot of angiomas and sepk, and also with this black nodule on the back and this is the dermatoscopic picture. So, using dermatoscopy we can correctly diagnose this lesion as a seborrheic keratosis based on the, the demarcation of the borders, the matte the border, comedo-like opening and media-like schist. And now I'd like to share with you this case. This is a patient be treated for actinic keratosis of the scalp with cycles of cryotherapy and photodynamic therapy. And this is a classic scenario in which we are ready with the cryotherapy to burn all erythematous lesions that we see, for example, this actinic keratosis. But the use of dermatoscopy, even when it seems unnecessary, has allowed us in this case to better analyze this erythematous lesion, this mold papule located on the scalp, and this is the dermatoscopic picture. As you can see here, we don't have the classical criteria of actinic keratosis, but we can see polymorphic vessels. And in fact, we decided to excise this lesion and the diagnosis was a melanotic melanoma, Breslow 0.8 millimeter. Another important rule is to apply the comparative approach for patients with multiple nevi with two aims. The first, to reduce excision rate of benign lesions, and the second, to increase the excision rate of malignant lesion. For example, here we have this young woman with multiple nevi, and clinically we can see 
This asymmetric nevus may be suspicious for melanoma and also dermatoscopically you can see brown network, some dots and a blotch in the left side may be suspicious for melanoma but if we compare this nevus with the others we see that it's not so different from others so the comparative approach outweighs the analytic approach in the management of patients with multiple nevi. The recommendation is to perform a total body mapping for patients with multiple nevi for the early diagnosis of melanoma and to avoid unnecessary excisions. Another important rule is the blue and black rule and we will discuss also how to differentiate structureless blue skin lesions. First of all, the diagnosis of blue nevus should be always confirmed by a subject convincing history of no changes, so the most important feature to analyze for the diagnosis of blue lesions is the anamnestic clue. So if we have a blue lesion with a stupid history of growth, we can think about blue nevus. But if we have a lesion with a rapid growth, we have to think also about think melanoma. Uh, if the patient had a previous melanoma, we have to think about melanoma metastasis, while if the patient had a slow growing lesion, we have to think about basal cell carcinoma. And in this case, we will search also for other criteria, for example, arborizing vessels. So the blue and black rule is the most important rule to differentiate blue nevus from nodular melanoma, because blue nevus shows only blue color, white melanoma shows blue and black colors together. Other recommendations for the diagnosis of nodular melanoma are excised doubtful nodular lesion, never follow up nodular lesions, and excised blue lesion that cannot be diagnosed as blue nevus, angiokeratoma, or seborrheic keratosis. Another rule is the black and brown rule. This is a patient with many nevi that show globules at the periphery, while, for example, this is a pregnant woman with multiple compound nevi with brown globules, while, for example, this patient has a different type of nevus with globules of different colors. For example, you can see globules, uh, brown globules, black globules, and gray globules. So, compound nevus uh, shows variable left nest along the basal level and upper dermis, while spitzoid lesion show large upward speeding nest at the basal level of the skin and the upper dermis. So, the black and blue brown rule is the most important rule for differentiating globular nevi from spitzoid lesions. Why? Because globular nevi show only brown gray globules, while spitzoid lesion show brown clay and also black globules. So just to remind you how to diagnose and manage Spitz nevus, there are three dermoscopic signs of pigmented Spitz nevi, black, brown, gray globules, peripheral globules or peripheral lines. Final recommendations are dermatoscopically asymmetric lesion with spitzoid features should be excised to rule out melanoma and spitzoid lesions should be managed according to the age of the patient. So the most important rule is to excise all spitzoid lesions after puberty. Thank you.